Upsets ruled the landscape of college wrestling this last week. Plus, we've got a job opening at USA Wrestling. It's the head coach of the Greco team. We'll have one of the candidates one-on-one. -on -one. Plus, we have results from a very busy week on the mats from across the country, border to border, and to all the ships at sea. Stay tuned. We'll be back. This is Takedown. Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, and it's time to take a look at what's trending this week on Takedown. Lots of news. First, we kick things off. Big Ten action. The Wolverines of Michigan played host to the mighty Golden Gophers of Minnesota. It was the maize and blue who came out swinging first and held a significant advantage early on. They claimed five of the first six for a 16-3 lead. The Gophers weren't going down without a fight. They won three straight of their own in the upper weights, including bonus point victories as needed at 74 and 97 to pull within two. Well, that was on the scoreboard anyway. The showdown everybody had waited for, and we talked about it on takedown. Well, that would decide the bout. It was top-ranked Tony Nelson of Minnesota taking on the number three, Adam Kuhn of Michigan. Yeah, I'm talking about that true freshman. The two traded escapes in the regulation, and neither could get an advantage with riding time. But the score was tied 2-2 heading into OT. In the second sudden victory, Kuhn scored a winning takedown on a counterattack, turning the corner on a Nelson double leg for a 4-2 victory. Kuhn moved to 23-0 on the year, while Nelson dropped consecutive bouts for the very first time in his collegiate career. You know, the coaching staff was, you know, very, very good about just making sure that I remained calm and just realized that, you know, hey, go out there and just wrestle your match. Um, that's just basically how you had to look at it at that one. Um, I just had to wrestle the way I can wrestle, and you know what? It really was. There wasn't a ton of pressure on me to go out there and win, because again, he's the two time NCAA champ. So I was trying to keep the pressure off me as much as possible, and just trying to keep a mental focus that hey, I'm just going out there to wrestle, and I'm just going to compete as hard as I can, and we'll see what happens. Well, with the Golden Gopher loss, the Sooners of Oklahoma had the opportunity to lock up the number two spot in the country, but the UNI Panthers had big plans of their own. For the second consecutive year, Doug Schwab's team shocked the college wrestling world when they took out the undefeated Sooners by the final score of 1917. UNI got out front 12-0 before the Sooners' first victory from 2013 national champ Kendrick Maple at 49. UNI led 19-11 with two bouts to go. At 198, third-ranked Travis Rudder in the win for the Sooners, but couldn't pick up any bonus points along the way. So it was up to Ross Larson at heavy to get the points needed for an OU win. Well, Larson would go on to win the bout, but the score was only 5-4, not enough to overcome the upset. The final score for Northern Iowa and Doug Schwab, 19-17. If two upsets weren't enough for you, let's take a trip east to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Panthers of Pittsburgh holding court there. They look to improve their record to 9-1 in a year with a thrilling 1918 win over Oklahoma State. With his team trailing by three heading into the final bout of the night, senior heavyweight P.J. Tasser scored an OT win for the victory over OSU's Austin Marsden to make it 18 points each. But Pitt was awarded the criteria point for the biggest win of the Jason Peters era. Another top 10 action, fourth ranked Iowa traveled to Lincoln to take on the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. That was Saturday. The Hawkeyes stayed hot, taking 7 of 10 on the night for the 22 9 victory. Thomas Gilman, Tony Ramos, Josh Jeva each gave Iowa an early 10 0 lead with 10 wins and a major before fifth ranked Jake Souflon defeated Iowa's Brody Grothes 5 2 at 49. Then third ranked Husker James Green ended Derek St. John's 27 match win streak. It was a 9 7 victory for Green at 57. Another Hawkeye win from Sammy Brooks extended Iowa's lead 16 9 before Nathan Burak and Bobby Telford closed it all out with a pair of decisions, making the final score 22 9 in favor of the Hawks. All right, wrestling fans, stay tuned. We've got more news to come. You're watching Takedown. <laughs> The end fight pace is high because it has to be because of him, but that's a lesson for you. Bring it. You dictate the pace. Keep that pressure. 
Drive, 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 finish, finish. This is where champions are born. This is where champions train. This is where the future of the sport resides. You gotta work harder to get to the angles where the angles are right there. That's it. You guys coming underneath me. Turn the pin here. There you go. Sometimes it's tough to sleep when you're afraid of the monsters in the dark. Monsters with names like Doubt. Failure. Mediocrity. When you're afraid of the monsters in the dark, the best thing to do is turn on the light. Conquer your fears with the Inception Shoe from Brute Wrestling. From novice to wrestling pros, Suplay.com is the name to know. Great selection, easy access, affordable prices let you keep your focus on the mat and your eyes on the prize. Singlets, wrestling shoes, knee pads, and headgear, it's all here. Delivered on time with great customer support. Mats, accessories, apparel, awards, personal, and healthcare products keeping you informed and on top. Visit Suplay.com today and discover what so many winners know. When you need to win, Suplay.com is a place to go. Headline News is brought to you by Sunflower Wrestling. Well, it wasn't extremely busy on the mat, so we kick off the headline news with the bouts that took place on Friday. Top-ranked Penn State kept their undefeated record intact with the 36-6 victory over the Hoosiers of Indiana. The Lions took a day off and then returned to action on Sunday where they took care of the Wildcats of Northwestern 39-8. Penn State remains perfect on the year, setting at 10-0 overall, 4-0 in Big Ten action. Now we go to the 10th ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State as they improve their record to 7-2 on the season with a 21-12 victory over Big Ten foe Northwestern. That Friday night at Muller High in Cincinnati. Ohio State returns to action January 24th to take on Nebraska. That'll be live at the Big Ten Network. Now prior to their win over Minnesota on Sunday, the 19th ranked Wolverines of Michigan kicked off a very busy weekend by downing 11th ranked Illinois Friday night. The score 19-13. That was their very first road win of the year. Now sitting on six individual bouts, earning two bonus point victories that would prove to be the difference. That's how it all shook out for the maize and blue. Well, the Cyclones of Iowa State earned a 22-13 victory over Rutgers on Friday night. Coach Kevin Jackson's Cyclones took 7 of 10 over the Scarlet Knights, including a major from Kyvan Gadsden at 97. I thought the Rutgers squad would offer up a little more heat, but they didn't have it in them. Iowa State returns to action this Friday for Big 12 showdown with the fifth-ranked Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Well, Riders Gary Taylor joined an elite list of college coaches Friday when he picked up his 400th career victory. The Broncos won 6 of 10 in conference play with the WL foe Bloomsburg. Congratulations to our good friend and a tremendous coach, Coach Gary Taylor. 400 club, outstanding. Northern Illinois scored their first Mid-American Conference win of the season at a convincing 24-9 win over Eastern Michigan. The Huskies won 7 of 10 over the Eagles, improving their record to 8-4 on the year and 1-1 one one in conference action. 
Now we go to Virginia where the 12th ranked Cavs took 8 of 10 over Duke on Friday night for an impressive 30 to 6 victory over the Blue Devils. The Cavs improved now to 12 and 2 on the year and 2 and 0 in conference play. The win marked their fifth straight duel win to go along with the Virginia Duels title they claimed just a week ago. Now behind major decisions from Chris Penny and Ty Walls, the 16th ranked Hokies of Virginia Tech earned a 29-3 win over North Carolina Tar Heels to start the weekend. They earned 9 of 10 inside of Casale Coliseum for their very first conference win of the year. Three consecutive victories from the North Dakota State middleweights helped the Bison secure a 19-17 win over Oregon State Beavers. Hang on, roll the tape back. I said a 19-17 win over the Oregon State Beavers. Nice job by the Bison with the win. NDSU has now won four consecutive duels, including two straight over ranked opponents. Trailing 17-12, South Dakota State won the final two matches of the night to defeat Wyoming 18-17. It was Coach Chris Bono's and the program's first win over the Cowboys in their history. SDSU now moves to 2-3 and three overall and 1-0 and oh in WWC action. Now let's check out some of the other scores from this past weekend in all levels of college wrestling. Well, the sport of wrestling lost a true pioneer this last weekend. Colonel Harold Henson passed away at the age of 90. In 1949, while wrestling for San Diego State University, Henson made history by becoming the first African American to compete at the NCAA championships. He went on to serve in the military and won the All-Army Championship in 1957 while touring in Korea. Henson is survived by his wife of 65 years, his four children, along with numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We salute Colonel and we salute his family in his passing. Fans, stay tuned. There's more to come. You're watching Takedown. Headline News is brought to you by Sunflower Wrestling. I'm John Reeder. I wear Cradle Gear. I, I live this, this sport of wrestling as, as a lifestyle. It's not a hobby for me. You know, I live it day in and day out. I, I picture it as a, a gladiator sport. You're walking out there, a gladiator, and you got 10 other comrades that you're going to war with. Cradle Gear, you know, they're nothing but class act people, and they want nothing but the best for me and the rest of their athletes, and Cradle Gear is, is top quality. Cradle Gear, creating a legacy. Top-notch kids are scared of that shirt, so if you get that shirt, it's one thing that you have that almost no one else has. Getting the I did a shirt means I went through the workouts, I did everything I needed to do. If I get the shirt, if it's going to be a great day, I'm going to put it in my wrestling room, in my school. When I go back to Texas, I'm wearing it to every tournament for everybody can know that they don't want to mess with me. Hi, I'm Wayne Boyd, Director of Operations and Development for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. The club was founded to help wrestling worldwide, especially at our senior level, of course at the collegiate level, and the high school level. But the most important level for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club is the kids level. And these are some of the guys today that will be tomorrow's Olympic champions. Let's hear it, guys. Titan Mercury! That's Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, San Marino, California.
Well, former two-time All-American Kyler Sanderson has been named the newest assistant coach at Utah Valley University. Kyler's a younger brother of current Penn State head coach and former Olympian Kale Sanderson, along with his brother Cody, who serves as the associate head coach for the Nittany Lions. We caught up with the youngest Sanderson just after the announcement. It's so good to, to come back to Utah to be in the place where I grew up and to be able to help help the Utah kids. You know, they have a special place in my heart. And it's, it's nice to be here to help them and you know there's some kids there's even a, a kid here on the team that I was that was on my high school team it's it's a lot of fun I've, I've really enjoyed being here um, I was here when the program was started I mean I was still in high school at that point but I watched them and came to their matches and it's, it's cool to be a part of the program now and to be able to help and, and just see the wrestling in Utah you know progress well, it was just last week that USA Wrestling announced that longtime Greco-Roman coach Steve Frazier would take over a new role within the organization, leaving behind a rather large pair of shoes to be filled. With the search for the national coach currently underway, one former USA wrestler and one medalist was quick to throw his hat in the ring. Now, if you haven't figured it out, that man is Matt the Law Lindland. As one of the founders of Team Quest in Portland, Oregon, Lindland quickly became one of the most respected trainers in all of MMA. Prior to coaching, Lindland attended Clackamas Community College where he won a JUCO title and then he transferred on to the University of Nebraska his senior year where he went 33-1 and for the Huskers, picking up a Big 8 conference title along the way. After excelling in both Olympic styles on the university level, Lindland then ultimately decided to focus on Greco-Roman and made his first world team in 97. He would go on to claim silver medal at the Olympics and capped off his career with a world gold in 2001 and then retired from competition. His experience as both a coach and athlete has made the outspoken Lindland one of the early favorites to take the reins of the Greco-Roman team. Well, I know you, you, you'd mentioned that you'd heard my name come up a few times, and, and I've been hearing that as well. But uh, to tell you as far as where I'm at is, is that, no, I reached out to Coach Frazier actually this morning. I tried to get a hold of him in Moscow. Uh, over the last two years, I've been traveling with Coach Frazier, and we found this application. It's called Viber. And so we're able to call each other no matter where we're at, if we're both overseas, if, if one of us are overseas. And so we, you know, we're in contact a lot. Coach Frazier and I are very close. Uh, he, was on my, he was in my corner for all the biggest matches in my career. Um, so I did reach out to him today. Um, I actually reached out to Les Gutches today as well. So to answer both those questions in a kind of a long roundabout way, uh, I reached out to Les just to let him know that I'd sent in my resume and uh, cover letter, and I wanted to know if he received it. He fired back a text message saying he did, and he would be calling me this afternoon to discuss uh, just the direction they're going and, and what, you know, what the ne next steps are. Matt Lindland is one of just a dozen or so wrestlers who have found their niche in the world of mixed martial arts. Sarah McMahon's story is a similar one. In 2004, she made history when she became the first American in history to claim a silver medal in women's freestyle at the 04 Games in Greece. Now, following her career on the mat, McMahon found a new outlet for competition, but this time it was in a cage. In only a few years' time, she has established herself as one of the best female fighters in the world with seven wins and no losses. But in one month's time, she'll face her biggest challenge to date in the form of another fellow Olympian, the big mouth one, UFC champ Ronda Rousey. McMahon recently went one-on-one -on -one with Fight Now's Mike Straka to talk about the bout. To the one-on-one, -on -one, I'm Mike Straka. Our guest tonight is the only wi American woman to win a silver medal in the Olympics for freestyle wrestling. She is an Abu Dhabi silver medalist. She's a world champion Fila grappler. Her name is Sarah McMahon. What we've seen, uh, and I think this is, holds true in probably your experience too, is Ronda Rousey. You can't talk about women's MMA without Ronda Rousey these days. We're matching her name. And I think what puts her above and beyond all her competition is her Olympic background. You know, and uh, Jimmy Pedro Jr. Uh, tells me that guys will come into his judo class and they can't survive one class. The same guys go to an MMA camp and they're six weeks in an MMA, class, in, in an MMA camp. And that's just the different level of athleticism that Olympic athletes have. Right. Yeah, and the, the dedication. I mean, uh, we've spent, you know, 
I've been wrestling for 16, 17 years. You know, that's that's over half of my lifetime. Has you know, I've been dedicating towards becoming great at what I do. And so, um, while there is some differences with MMA, um, I already know how to use my body as an athletic tool. And so, I think that she probably experiences the same kind of uh, experience. Hindsight is twenty twenty vision, but looking back at it now, you're a pro in mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. Do you wish you would have taken some time and maybe take a couple steps back? to take five mm -hmm. steps forward, compete in amateur boxing or amateur kickboxing? Um, no, I wish I would have had more amateur fights, but really with like the smaller pool, like there's just always gonna be a smaller pool of women doing combative sports in general. It's the same in wrestling, grappling, judo. It's smaller than the men's because men are kind of lean more towards combative sports. But eventually I just didn't have anybody who was an amateur who would accept the fight against me. So I kind of got, I would have liked five or six because then you can really go out there and let your hands go and you know start seeing more mistakes. You can force it to stay only on your feet, you know, and get a little bit more experience. And I would have loved that because I I actually like fighting. I want to fight more often. I, if I could compete every two months, I definitely would. I love it. For the one-on-one -on -one today, I'm Mike Straka. This is Sarah McMahon. Thanks to Joey Varner. Till next time, enjoy the fights. Be sure to check out the entire interview with Fight Now TV and our good friend Mike Straka. You can also find him online at MikeStraka.com. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be back. There's more. This is Takedown. It's what gives them the stability in their life, the discipline, the courage to chase that dream. Um, it's personal. The state of Oklahoma since 1924 has won Olympic gold medals in the sport of wrestling. It's probably our most successful sport in the Olympics for the state. And I'm fighting for that 12-year-old kid in Oklahoma. I'm fighting for that kid that, that, that has that dream. America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world. From world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event. To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go. Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every belt. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. Well, part of our sport's growth, and one of the major reasons it remains a part of the Olympic Games, is because of the progression and the evolution of women's wrestling. Now, since the mid-90s, the number of girls competing in high school has gone from just over 800 to well over 8,000. More than 20 colleges currently sponsor the sport. And last week, our own Dan McCool talked with one of the pioneers of women's wrestling, Oklahoma City Stars head coach Archie Randall. The talent pool for women's wrestling now is like, I'd say it's, it's improved by 100%. They're getting more mat time, they're wrestling more, there's more girl programs, there's more opportunities for them. Uh, I host a girls folk style national tournament for USA Wrestling in Oklahoma City. First year I had it, 250 kids. This year projected 800. So it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. And as it grows, the talent pool gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it's a matter of, since we're adding four new colleges this next year, uh, what is it called, parity? It's going to spread out more. It, it's 
continuously getting stronger and increasing. Uh, the first year I went to the national tournament before OCU started the program, I went and watched it. There were five teams there, less than 30 girls. Now, I think our last year tournament was 220. It's growing. Uh, the girls are getting tougher. And you better be able to, like you said, strap it on or you ain't going to win. You're going to get beat. And the, the technique level has increased tremendously. If you watch the girls wrestle, it's not grab you, fall down on top of you, and hope you get a pin. It's all, it's all about strategies, techniques, where I'm at on the mat. It's about everything. It's, all, it's, it's a, a great concept. And I, I think in the next oh, three to five years, it's going to grow tremendously. It's a great opportunity for a college, too, to have a women's program. And that's the deal. It's about opportunities. The more opportunities you give to women to wrestle, the better they will get. Wrestling is not like any other sport. You must participate. You have to have competition to get better. You don't get better by practicing. You got to go compete to get better. You have to compete to get better. And I think that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're challenging three or 400 women in the college wrestling ranks to get better. And then we're challenging them to go on to the Olympic level and get better. And hopefully they come back, back to our program and, and we win the thing. That's what it's about, winning the thing. Well, as we close out today's program, we'd like to remind you that the growth of wrestling is a responsibility that falls on all of us. The Hawkeye Wrestling Club is just one of several independent organizations that provide training facilities and housing needed to create the future World and Olympic champs. But without the support of you, the fan, it's a mission that wouldn't be possible. Now, one of the ways the HWC raises money to support the athletes is with the annual Arctic Plunge. The name pretty much says it all. It's frigid, uncomfortable, and a whole lot of fun to watch. So with that, Let's take a look at Luke Eustace. Hey, what's up? Just at the uh, site of the 2013 Arctic Plunge. The Hawkeye Wrestling Club just breaking some ice, getting ready for Saturday. Luke Lofthouse and I came out, and gave him a set up, and uh, just kind of looking forward to it. Headed down for the uh, preliminary run of the Arctic Plunge. Getting ready to jump in the water. So you gotta go down through the little lake here. What all goes down this Friday night just prior to the Minnesota Iowa dual meet in Iowa City. Head on over to the HawkeyeWrestlingClub.com for more information and to make your pledge today. Well, that'll do it for this week's show, and I gotta tell you, that looked really uncomfortable. <laughs> so be sure to check out our website, takedownradio.com, for interviews with Matt Lindland, Gabe Dean, Joe Colin, Adam Chalfat, and many others. Be sure to like us on Facebook for all the breaking wrestling news as it happens. Join us every Saturday morning for Takedown Wrestling Radio. For all of us here, I'm Scott Casper, and that's what's trending on Takedown.